world and welcome everybody welcome back to the end of the week just like every week we meet here on on friday to celebrate the fact that just a few hours away just a few hours away and hopefully this can be an opportunity for us to kind of hang out together and kind of rewind relax maybe learn some things i learn stuff all the time while I'm on stream, uh, that's my selfish motivation for doing these is that you guys teach me quite a bit. And uh, hopefully the services re reciprocated back towards you. Hopefully you guys are able to pick up on some things. Hello, XY. Thanks for joining. Welcome back. Welcome. 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 Uh, we uh, somehow I knew you're going to be the first person in the chat. Good morning. <laughs> welcome. Uh, today we're gonna we're gonna pick up kind of where we left off yesterday or yesterday on last week's stream we we ran into some technical difficulties uh, as things happen from time to time uh, last week we had an issue when we were starting to build out our ansible modules uh, we had a problem with the uh, hello all right hello welcome Hobbin. glad to have you here um Mohammed, correct me, do you prefer to be called Amin? Either way, uh, glad to have you here. Uh, last last week, we got into the the approach of, of building out the Ansible modules, and then we ran into some authentication issues, and I didn't have time to... I actually honestly didn't have the willpower to troubleshoot uh, on live stream. One of my favorite things about doing these live streams is that when we run into problems, we have an opportunity to kind of like figure it out together. Uh, just like we did with the, when we were setting up the uh, Kia DHCP service, we ran into some problems. <clears throat> Chat really, you guys really came through and helped me get that up and running. Uh, but sometimes the troubleshooting is just, it's not gonna be well spent time. And that's what we ran into this problem last week where um, we, uh, we saw that our authentication was failing towards the API uh, within our Ansible module. And the actual problem is, uh, I couldn't get an answer at the time, but looking at it a little bit more, is that in the authentication uh, library, um, there's, a, there's a mechanism to kind of compare one of the headers that is sent and then the response that comes back. And if there is a difference in between the two values, uh, a warning message will appear. Now, unfortunately, the SDK that we're working with didn't have the opportunity of handling that warning message gracefully. Uh, and so when the, when the string was different from, the string I got back from the API looked different than the string that I sent to the API, that's where uh, that warning message came and the SDK just kind of uh, just threw up its hands and was like, I don't know. Um, and so anyway, uh, we're past that point now. And now we we actually are going to start building out some of these Ansible modules for the Prisma Access SASE solution from Palo Alto Networks. And uh, <clears throat> so it's going to be kind of a, a chill session today. I, I, I don't think we're going to do a whole lot of like technical training or education. Maybe we will. Um, maybe someone in chat will have something that they're interested in learning. And uh, as always, feel free to, to pipe up and ask for clarification or uh, ask for some additional context on that. <clears throat> so uh, with that being said, let's talk a little bit about what we, I can't do my etch and sketch, my iPad's not connecting, so I can't can't draw on the screen today. Uh, but effectively, what it is, is, is we got this um, SASE solution, which is uh, Prisma Access. I'm probably going to have to reauthenticate here just in a second. Mm, probably, maybe not. I didn't have to. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to build an Ansible module that will help us create what's called a service connection. And you can think of a service connection in the SASE world as... Um, just basically a, a method of connecting to like an on-prem data center over IPsec VPN. Uh, and so IPsec VPNs are like super complicated because there's like all these different components. 
Uh, and so that's kind of where I wanted to, to focus in on as far as our development today. We'll be doing pretty much everything in Python today. <clears throat> it's also worth uh, pointing out that uh, in, in kind of getting ready for this stream, I did build something that I'll just share with us here. We may or may not get an opportunity to use it. Uh, and that is, let me click on this guy. Let me click on this guy. And where are you at, buddy? Here we are. So I built a, a, a couple different Docker containers uh, that can kind of help you get up and running with automating. Uh, and so uh, one of these containers is built on Python. It will give you like an interactive Python shell. Uh, it'll automatically log you in into the system. Uh, get an active session, an active uh, API token. Uh, and as long as you know how to use the Python SDK, well, then you're kind of good to go from that point going forward. Another is an Ansible container. Uh, this just addresses some of the challenges with getting uh, Ansible all set up, getting the right collections installed, getting them installed in the right spots, uh, doing things like getting the, uh, the dependencies all in there. It's unfortunately, it's, it's not as straightforward when you work in a Python environment of just like jumping in and, and getting after it. Uh, but uh, hopefully these containers can can help you. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to check out this repository. Um, I will fork it on my, uh, on my GitHub account that we use for this stream. Let's go ahead and click that fork button right there. And so uh, if you guys are following the pan office hours uh, GitHub account, which what we're using for all of our development here, um, you'll be able to find those containers. Okay, awesome. So uh, let me look back up here. Again, our objective is we want to create this thing called a service connection. Right now I have one service connection right now. It's called Deep Space Nine. Uh, my internal subnets that I'm going to be advertising across this IPsec VPN, which again would reside on prem. It's like a data center in our colo or, or wherever you have your infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this service connection called Deep Space Nine will advertise uh, these subnets. Uh, right now the tunnel is down, so that's why we got an error. Um, we can also see kind of the information related to the IPsec VPN tunnel, specifically where is the uh, destination tunnel for Prisma. Uh, we also see the destination IP address, the public IP that I'm supposed to build my VPN tunnel to. Uh, we also see the eVGP router uh, that is again on the remote side of my VPN tunnel, so in Prisma Cloud. Uh, and it looks like BGP is disabled and uh, for both IPv4 and IPv6. And if we look into the routing information, let me see. Mm, show me the route tables for this. There shouldn't be anything because the tunnel is down right now. Yeah. So obviously if a tunnel is down, the adjacency is informed and so uh, no routing information is shared between them. All right. Uh, so uh, the, the place for me to go <clears throat> is actually, let's try to do this in the GUI first. Let's go ahead and create, add a service connection. And let's look at this. Let's call this uh, <clears throat> called live stream. And the region that we want this service connection to terminate in is going to be in North America. And it's going to be in US, let's pick US Central. That should be good enough. All right, now if I try to save it, I'm curious what's gonna happen here. So uh, it doesn't allow me to save this configuration until I build the actual IPsec VPN tunnel. So you can think of like a service connection, it's kind of like an abstraction over uh, the, um, over the IPsec VPN, it's got the tunnel config, it's got routing config, and it's got quality of service config. And all those things kind of form together like Voltron to create the service connection. Uh, so in order for me to proceed, I'm gonna have to go through the setup here and enter some information about my tunnel. 
Uh, we will call this the tunnel to Houston. Uh, the branch type of device. This is kind of cool. Uh, we're going to pick, we're obviously going to pick a Palo Alto Networks firewall. Uh, we could do this based on certificates, which would make some things easier and some things more difficult. Uh, but in our case, we'll just stick with a pre-shared key. And let me enter a, uh, let's see, YouTube. Well, that's not a good enough key. Let me enter <coughs> Palo Alto, oops, Palo Alto one exclamation point. That's not a good enough key either. <clears throat> oh, they don't match. There we go. So Palo Alto one will be my pre-shared key. This isn't actually going to go into production, so I don't feel too terrible about sharing that information with you. <clears throat> uh, we can see some local identification. Uh, also for so for the Ike local ID, also for Ike peer ID. Uh, we can use the static IT or branch. Let's do uh, let's do branch. And then the peer will identify uh, based on, let's see, based on an IP address. Now, the way that I like to find my IP address is I type in <clears throat> I, uh, curl ifconfig.io. Oh, just kidding. That didn't, whoa. All right, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. All right, uh, so we'll just enter a random IP address. We'll say 1.1.1.1. Again, this isn't actually getting pushed, so it doesn't have to be valid. And um, I think that should be good enough. Let's let's take a look at the uh, different Ike profiles here. So I want to do Ike version 2. So this is for the phase 1 of the IPsec VPN tunnel. It looks like we've got a, a pre-built crypto profile. I feel happy with that. Uh, and Ike Nat tra Traversal, which we're going to need. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the save button. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and inspect my browser. Now, usually, uh, <clears throat> for most solutions, if you inspect your browser's uh, API calls by hitting like F12 on your keyboard, <clears throat> I believe that's universal for Firefox as well. Obviously, for all Chromium ones, it's F12. Uh, now, typically what will take place whenever you're capturing like an API driven uh, solution, you will get the, you'll get all the API calls that are made from the client, which in this case is our browser to the backend server. Uh, you'll be able to see the request go out and you'll be able to see the response come back in. And this usually drives my development efforts whenever I'm building something through Ansible or just learning how an API works. Now, in our case, that's not going to be what's actually necessary because we have a uh, pan.dev, which has the full API spec for our, uh, our SaaS solution. So here I'm looking at service connections. I can see all the, the various types of requests that I can do the HTTP methods. I can see the response data, what needs to be, uh, inside of the body of a put operation or post. So, we get, we get insights into all that. So that's not going to be tremendously valuable. If what, what I'm hoping that though, is like, if I hit save right here, I'm hoping to see, uh, I didn't see anything. Oh, wait a minute. Is there a post operation that took place here? <clears throat> what I'm looking for specifically, and this isn't going to be what I'm looking for. Um, what I'm looking for is like, there's different variations of, of like, there's different components that we need to build, right? The, the Ike profile, IPsec profile, some of those we already have pre-built. Um, then we need to build like the IPsec tunnel, which kind of combines phase one and phase two into uh, this construct that we call the IPsec VPN tunnel. Uh, and then we need to build the service connection on top of it. So sometimes just, you know, if you, if you capture the API calls that are happening in your browser, they can give you like a good path forward as far as like which operation needs to take place at which time. Um, but for now, let's just go ahead and hit save on the IPsec tunnel. And here we can see the various different um, methods that are taking place in the background. And now that I got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the save button. And we see more operations taking place in the background. 
Okay. Uh, so, with that being said, uh, what I should see... Actually, I don't think I'm going to see it until we actually do a commit operation. I'm going to stop my browser sniffing here. Uh, we won't see the the subnets or like the service IP or any of that until we actually perform a commit operation, which I don't think we're going to be doing today. We just want to be able to uh, create, what's the Twitch channel? I miss seeing the chat. Oh yeah, sure. Um, network automation. <laughs> Shows you uh, my creativity as far as um, the uh, uh, my naming schema. So network automation on Twitch. Um, there, there's two separate streams, uh, happening at the same time. So some of the chat takes place in the YouTube, some of the uh, chat takes place on Twitch. Um, there isn't a whole lot of conversation that takes place. Usually starts to have some conversation in the chat whenever I start making boo-boos and running into problems. So, uh, either one that you want to use, uh, glad to have you here. Okay. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's take a peek and let me close this out. I want to sort by the the method and I don't see the method by default. So let me right click on here and cl include method. And now I want to sort out all the gets because I don't care about the gets. I don't care about the options. I really only care about the post. And if there is a put, I'll take a look at that as well. Um, so let's see for this. Let me I don't think I can. Hmm. Actually, let's let's go back to the water flow that based on time, uh, so that I can see kind of. There we go. Order of operations taking place here. So here's a post. I don't think this is going to be what I'm looking for, and it's not. Uh, network profiles monitor. Ike gateway. Let's look at the. Preview. Okay, here we're starting to see some goodies. There's a pre-shared key. Oh boy, I hope I don't need to enter the pre-shared key as. Um, oh, that would that would be terrible if that was the case. Uh, hopefully, we don't we don't need to add the pre-shared key uh, in a kind of hash because that will really block the kick. Uh, I'm not really gonna. It doesn't look like I'm gonna get so much value out of this, so we'll just jump right into the documentation instead. All right, so we'll split our page over here. We'll have pan.dev on the left. In the background, we'll have the uh, Sassy solution. And we'll also have open, uh, let me click on this, there we go. We will also have open Postman. And Postman will be doing the API calls against Sassy, the Sassy solution. And we'll use the uh, documentation and the API spec to kind of figure out what API calls we need to make in order to build this stuff. All right, so let me close out all of these tabs and let's look at our API spec for uh, the solution. So first thing is this is not alphabetical. Uh, all right, never too easy, is it? All right, uh, let's see what we've got here. I'm looking for Ike gateways. So in order to perform this, let's look at let's look at a list of all of our Ike gateways, and the folder is going to be uh, service connections because that's what we're building, right? So there's several different folders that you can select from when talking to this API. There's a shared folder, which means like the configuration objects are shared across all folders. We think of it as like the root directory and anything inside of there is inherited by subfolders below it. We have one for mobile users for like cell phones connecting over VPN. Uh, we have uh, remote networks, uh, which are kind of like branch offices. And then we have service connections, which are kind of like your data centers and co-locations. It's not entirely the case, honestly, and obviously it, it varies between each environment. Uh, but you can think of it as kind of that. So we're working on building new service connections here. Now, if I issue this API call right now, I'm going to get a 401 because I have an invalid request token. So what I need to do is I need to request a refresh on my token. So I'm going to ask Postman to handle that for me. 
I'm going to say use that token. And then we'll come back over here and request. There we go. All right. So looking in the response that we got back, it looks like we've got one, two. We've got a total of two Ike gateways. Uh, one Ike gateway is listed right here. And that is honestly, that's just the that's the profile. I see the peer IP address, which is cool. Uh, and then we see the other one. This is the one that we just created. Uh, I know that because we put in the IP address of 1.1.1 as the peer ID. Obviously, that wouldn't be the case, but um, just an example. So cool. Uh, here's like all of the information around the Ike gateway. So that's a good start point. I'm going to keep this one up. We'll just go ahead and click save. Uh, and so we know we need that. Let's take a look at... I don't think we need to create new profiles because we're just going to use uh, these two profiles, Palo Alto Networks Ike Crypto for uh, for our uh, for our Ike, and uh, I thought there was a profile for IPsec. Uh, how do I stream to both platforms? I use a a tool called what is this thing called? Streamlabs desktop, uh, streamlabs.com. Yeah, so I use uh, Streamlabs and it allows me to um, simultaneously stream to both YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Uh, a lot of people like to, to, to watch Twitch uh, just because it's kind of synonymous with streaming. Uh, so sometimes I get, you know, some, some good interaction on the Twitch side of things but the vast majority of my views come from YouTube. So I wanna to try to appease both audiences. <laughs> Plus like Twitch, uh, again, it's like laser focused on streaming. So like the recorded videos go down after a week. Whereas YouTube, obviously there's like persistence. And that's honestly, that's where, where most of the views come in is on the YouTube side. So there we go, split brain. And I'm doing it over like a five meg circuit. <laughs> so performance sucks. I'm sorry. I'm going to be upgrading my internet here. But uh, anyway, so Ike gateways, uh, we clearly need to create an Ike gateway. Uh, let's look at the IPsec tunnels. Let's get a list of our current tunnels here. And I'll uncheck some of those parameters. Service connections. Listen that. Yeah, no worries. Okay, and so here's our service connection. Uh, wait a minute, no, 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 this is the... Hmm. Yeah, this is the actual IPsec tunnel. So I have one already called Cisco, and uh, that one was already declared before we started. And then the one that we created just a second ago, we called it Houston, and the Ike gateway name is right there. Is that the Ike gateway? Let's see, it ends in 711. Is this one? Okay, cool. So when we create, it looks like we got to create the Ike gateway first, capture the name that gets uh, generated. Uh, no, actually, I think we should be able to add the name. I didn't see an opportunity in the GUI, but I think we have an opportunity through the API. We'll see how that works. So we capture that the name of the Ike gateway and then include it into the IPsec VPN tunnel underneath this parameter right here. And that's where we focus. That's where our second profile comes in is for the IPsec side of things. So I we'll have a profile that we're using for Ike phase one, and then we have another profile that we use for IPsec, which is for phase two. And, uh, and these are the tunnels. And then the last thing I think we need to create is the, where's the, oh, where's the service connection? There it is. So there we go. Let's uncheck, uncheck, uncheck. Service connections is the name of our folder. Fire that off. Okay. And so here we got our two uh, service connections. So Deep Space Nine. 
uh, that was already there. And then live stream. This is what we created. Okay. So it looks like we got to create these three things and we got to create them in a sequential order. So thinking about the approach here, would it make sense if we created, I think it does. I'm talking myself into it, but I'm interested in your thoughts. Would it make sense if we created one module to provision all three things and then work out the, the workflow in the background? Or would it make more sense if we created three separate modules to handle the three separate components? My opinion is that we create three separate modules for the three separate components. This will create a little bit more bloat as far as the modules go, but it will allow somebody to create individual components without having to create all three, right? So if, if we have an active service connection and we want to add an IPsec VPN tunnel, um, we don't have to create a new service connection for that VPN tunnel. We could add just the VPN tunnel and associate it to the service connection. I think that's the wrath that path that I want to go down. Okay. So we know how to list all of these tunnels or the, uh, all these components, these three components. Let me just go ahead and get a document. Let's go ahead. Oh, Hey, that was our, uh, event driven Ansible stuff, man. That was cool. Definitely going to revisit that. Uh, actually, yeah, let's open a new window. Let's close that out. And sure. Install some extensions here. And update. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down this GitHub repo for our Ansible collection. And we'll work from here. Let's go ahead and do a clone operation. Uh, I want this to be in WSL. So let's open that. Open the dev. Oh, I, oh, I already have it. I already have the folder. Okay, great. So the folder is already on my computer. I just need to pull down any updates. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of build out my thought process and workflow uh, as a text file. And we'll just, we'll go off of that. All right. Uh, as we wait, you guys have anything interesting happen this week? You have any good, good successes or failures to share? Any good stories? Doesn't have to be related to automation. Uh, just curious. See anything interesting happened to me this week. Uh, I cleaned up a lot of dog vomit this week. I guess that's just <laughs> that's the story of my life. That's about as much as excitement as I get around these days. Um, all right. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do a get pull operation and this will pull down the, uh, what's going on here? Ah, uh, okay. I need to check out the main branch. So get branch. Actually, we can just do this in Visual Studio Code. Check out the main branch and then we'll do a pull. I got 17 changes, 17 commits to pull in. And it's unhappy with me. It's unhappy because I've got a branch conflict. We had created a branch on here called address objects and we never did anything with it. Um, and so me trying to pull down uh, the Updates is, is a problem because on a different workstation, I had created a branch with the same name. So Git is pretty unhappy with me right now. Uh, there's a way to delete the branch. It's uh, Git branch. I think it's capital D. Uh, well, actually, hold on. Let's see. Git checkout main. And then Git branch dash. I believe it's capital D. Address objects that will cl uh, clear out that branch and then we'll do another pull operation and it's not happy about some changes that I have in this branch. Let's go ahead and stash all of these. We'll discard all of these changes because I don't care about them. Uh, 
now we'll pull down. There we go. Okay. Now we're in a good spot. Okay, so I'm trying to upgrade Palo Alto Firewall with Ansible, and what baffled me is that I can't do it with the user that has that that only has all XML privileges. It needs super user. So let's take a look at this real quick. I've never upgraded a firewall through Ansible. Let's figure this out for you. <clears throat> Let me move over to oh San Virtual Firewall 01, maybe. Is it online? Is it down? Maybe I gotta add the domain name. Redtail.com. Bueller. Bueller. Okay. Try Houston instead. There we go. Let's figure this out for you real quick. So if you have a if you have access to the XML API, you effectively have like full King Kong access. Like you can do whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, so I'm interested about the the super user component of this. Um, let's create a new user. Actually, do I have one that's not connected to Panorama? Let's try Dallas. Yeah, I think Dallas is standalone. I don't want to mess with anything Panorama. <clears throat> yeah, no worries. All right. So obviously I logged in as admin. And as you can imagine, I have full permissions as that user. Let's create a user here. We'll get to the Ansible stuff in a little bit, but let's figure this out now. Uh, let's look at our any committing changes. Any changes? Let's preview. Uh, okay, let me just stash any any changes so that I'm not worried about something in the queue so go ahead and all right okay uh let's create a new local yo uh, user user we'll call this one twitchy and we'll create a password of hello alto one exclamation point and we'll go ahead and hit okay uh oh this is not where I want to create the user that's for a, a local user database. I want to get to the administrators. There we go. Uh, okay, we already have pan office hours here. Let's create a different user though. Uh, we'll call him Twitchy. Twitchy, Twitchy has uh, no authentication profile. We'll leave that alone. Palo Alto one exclamation point. What will help me is understanding like from your perspective, like what user permissions does this account have? Like when I set this up, I don't want to set up with super user admin. I want to know like what level of permissions you're working with. Uh, and then we'll kind of go through the process of figuring that out. Hello, Alto one exclamation point. Uh, so dynamic, are you as a device admin? Um, or is it role based? Do you have some type of role? Let me know. I'm going to create this one right now as just a device admin. So not a super user. And we'll hit okay. And fire this off. All right. What firewall release am I running? Do I even have an upgrade possible? You have all the XML permissions. Okay. Uh, where are the, yes, XML API rule. Okay. Role based. I don't know where that's done. Let's look at the Do, 
be under the authentication profile. Where do the permissions get? Eh, this isn't what I'm looking for. So there's 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 two APIs, two REST based APIs, right? There's the XML API, which is available at slash API. And then there's the REST API, uh, REST API dash doc. Which, uh, when you work directly with the REST API, it's usually configuration driven only. So you can do things like make, manage configuration objects. The, the difference in between here is the difference on permissions. XML, you have full King Kong access to do whatever you want. And on the, uh, the config based REST API, uh, you can have very granular permissions uh, controlled. Uh, so I need to create the admin roles. Let's do that. Let's create. So we got audit, crypto, and security admin. Ah, okay, gotcha. Yep. So um, REST API. This is for this. XML API is for this. So we'll call this one. I don't know. Live streamers. And we'll add in all the XML API permissions uh probably the web gui too yeah be able to log in and kind of navigate uh don't really care care about command line don't really care about the rest api but we'll we'll just go ahead and leave that there and then we'll we'll go back to twitchy and we'll change it to role based and say live streamers there we go. Uh, remove all web GUI and only leave XMLs. Okay. We'll do that. Admin profile. Remove all the web GUI nonsense. All right. And uh, we'll exclude all of these as well. All right. So the only thing that we have is XML, but we have all the XML. So pretty cool. Click OK. And uh, let's fire it off. Let's get that user in here. Also, let's check our the version that I'm running. I don't know if I have an upgrade available. Come back to my dashboard. I am running version 10.2.3. Boy, I feel like that's the latest. I might be wrong. I don't check these things often. Uh, software. No update information available. Hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I should see should see all the software binaries listed right here, right? Why can't I get, ah, there we go. Did you attach your user to this role? I thought I did, let's double check. Uh, Twitchy is a part of the live streamers profile. So yes, it is there. And it looks like the commit has gone through. Oh, no, still going through. Okay. There we go. All right. So now that I've got Twitchy, let's just kind of map out my, my thought process here, right? So we got a username called Twitchy. We've got a password, Apollo Alto one exclamation point. Uh, we'll make this in YAML. Here we go. All right. So we got the username and password. Uh, current version is 10.2.3. And uh, upgrade is at 10.2.3-h2 for our 
a hot fix. Let me validate that. Just kind of trying to grab all the information about this because this will be a learning experience for me. Uh, so yep, yeah, uh, currently installed, looks good. Uh, and so the automation tool is going to be, oh, we're gonna use Ansible, right? Uh, is it Ansible that you're, please validate that. Let me go through here. Oh yeah, it says you're trying to use Ansible. All right, so we need to get a API token, right? And the way that we do that is we request it based and we pass in the username and password first. So I'm gonna open up Postman to handle this for me. I'm gonna change the color here to white just so it pops a little bit more. Okay, cool. All right, so Palo Alto Collections. Let me look at pan os authentication generate api key and we're going to pass in the username of twitchy and yep that's the right password uh, so the difference here is going to be uh, dallas rol01 so this is the api call this should just be a one-time operation for us by the way and there we go, we got our API key. So let's go ahead and paste that right there. Okay. PanOS software module. That was my very next question, thank you. Uh, PanOS, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new repo here. Uh, code, actually make dir, uh, Apollo or PanOS upgrade Ansible. And we'll open that up. PanOS upgrade Ansible. We'll copy all of this information. We'll move over into a new directory. All right. Uh, sure. Update my terminal. Let's create a new file and just dump all of that information that we had in there. Looks good. Okay. So the very first thing I need to do is get a, a, a custom virtual environment for this new environment. So we're going to use poetry for that. Uh, we'll say this is a example repository repo for upgrading PanOS with Ansible. Uh, that is the username, Apache 2.0. Sure, sure. We're going to install Ansible. Select zero. We're also going to install uh, PanOS Python. There we go, zero. Um, anything else? I think that's it. Uh, development dependencies, yeah. Let's go ahead and add, let's add black for formatting. Any Python code that we do. We'll add flake eight to lint any of our code. So they'll tell us if there's any obvious issues with our formatting. Um, that should be good. I think that's good enough. All right, and let's go ahead and install the virtual environment. Okay, while that's going through the install, let's open up the PanOS software module. Let's... let's use Google. There we go. PanOS software. Hmm. I think, I think this is the, is this managed by Red Hat? This, ma this module is maintained by the Ansible community. Interesting. Uh, so let me use uh let's go back to Google and we will type in Palo Alto Networks Ansible Collection. We'll use PanOS software, but I also want to check to see if uh if there's an official module for this from from actually from Palo Alto. Uh, 
the other one was managed by the community. So we'll see, uh, look at module reference, quite a bit of modules. Type in software, manage PanOS software. Okay. So is there a difference between these two? I feel like there is. I feel like this is something that we manage, whereas the other one is managed by Red Hat. I might be wrong. Maybe, maybe that's your issue. No, uh, don't, I wouldn't worry so much about that. I, I would say if Ansible has kind of blessed any of these uh, community-based modules, then they should be they should be good to go. Honestly, what it looks like is that uh, I think this is the actual module. Because, I mean, it looks almost identical. Like, even, like, down to the documentation, even down to the examples used. 816-900-901. Yeah, so, I don't know. It says it's managed by the Ansible community, but it looks just like the one from the official repo. So, we'll, uh, we'll stick with this one for now. And uh, we'll see if we can have success with it. All right, so let's copy an example here. Install, that should be good. All right, so uh, the playbook, we'll just go ahead and call this, uh, we'll call it upgrade.yaml. And I'm just gonna paste that in here. Obviously that's not a full module. There's all kinds of things that we need to add. Where's the top? I'm just gonna find an example repo and we'll just kind of grab some of these goodies. So, pan examples. Inside of the Ansible directory, let's look at, uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's go look at this one. And look at, look at playbook, there we go. So this is basically what I wanted to copy right there. And we'll move this task underneath the tasks branch right there. Okay, we're starting off pretty strong. I'm gonna remove this collections and we're gonna use this right here. Okay. Um, and yeah, go ahead and share me what, uh, share with me what you've got. If you've got a, a GitHub repo or like, a, if you can dump it in something like Pastebin, that'll probably do better than, um, what do you call it? Twitch chat. <laughs> uh, okay, so you have install equals true and restart equals true. Okay, we'll go ahead and add those flags. Install true. Restart true. Uh, so we need to uh, create an inventory file. For now, let's just go ahead and type in Dallas virtual fire 01. I'll just call it Dallas. Uh, connection local, gather facts, blah, blah, blah. This is going to update PanOS. Mike Jones. Mike, I don't know if I've said this story before. Uh, <laughs> a family member had the phone number used in that song, the Mike Jones phone number. It was like, it was just like uh, one or two digits over. It was one or two digits off from the phone number that was used in the song. I think I've told the story many times, but uh, your name will always remind me of it because uh, my, my uh, one of my family members, she was just telling me one day, and this is like, she's, bless her heart, you know, she's like in her, in her 50s at this point. She's like, I keep getting these drunk people calling me at the middle of the night and saying, Mike Jones. <laughs> oh. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, she had no idea what was going on, why that was happening to her. Um, fortunately, the uh, the meme ended. Uh, let's copy our Ansible config and our YAML. All right, so Ansible config will go right here. And uh, we need to hard code the Python version. It's funny because people attempt to call. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it was, it's all, right, man, this was like, what, 2004, 2005? Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was only people, like, you know, middle of the night, probably on, you know, inebriated to some level, a few sheets to the wind, if you will. Um, so just imagine, like, one of your family members getting all these prank calls in the middle of the night. Ah, uh, those were the days, man. Okay. Uh, let's see which Python. So I'm just, oh, which Python. Oh, we're not actually, we created our virtual environment, but we haven't activated it. So poetry shell, clear the screen. Now we'll type in which Python. And there's the path to my Python virtual environments interpreter. So we'll add that right there. If we don't add that Ansible will, it, it'll, it'll mess up. Like it'll, it'll pick the wrong one if we don't hard code it. So we're going to do that. Uh, back when they were still making decent songs, the lyrics these days are terrible. You know, uh, so I'm from the South, like I'm, I'm from Houston. So Mike Jones, obviously like I grew up with that guy in high school. Yeah. I mean like his music, he didn't go to my high school, but, um, so like I'm, I'm very well, um, connected into that culture of, of rap and I'll tell you man I don't know uh, many 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 rap artists of those days uh, they could not hold a candle to some of the rap artists out there today not all of them obviously there is some really some real trash out there today for sure but I would make the argument that today is probably one of the best eras of rap um, and that just comes from a white kid from the suburbs. So what do I know? But uh, there are some absolutely amazing artists. And not just named Kendrick, right? There's obviously Kendrick, but uh, they're Pusha T and, and J. Cole. And uh, there's some just absolutely phenomenal lyricists out there today. But yeah, mumble rap. I, I kind of mumble rap kind of is a step in the wrong direction. Uh, let's see. I'm going to paste in my inventory here. We're going to call this, uh, Pan OS and the host will be Dallas. And, uh, let's save this. This is going to be my inventory .yaml file. And, um, well, AI are making wraps now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some, uh, it's, yeah. The AI. Oh my God. I can't get enough of it. I'm I'm hooked on all things AI. Uh, which, by the way, guys, uh, I forked over the money this morning, but ChatGPT has a uh, a plus version here. While I'm over here trying to code this up, let's see if ChatGPT can get us a playbook to work. Uh, I want you to create an Ansible playbook that will upgrade the Pan OS software on my Palo Alto Networks firewall. Um, anything I need to pass? No, I think that's good enough. Oh, let's say, uh, make sure to use the Pan OS software Ansible module to complete the job. All right. Let's see who's faster, me or AI. Oh, crap. Oh, darn it. <laughs> you knew it was coming, right? Yeah, you knew it was. Uh, okay. Here's some things I like about this, and here's where I think it's wrong. Uh, okay, well, well, it's still going, so... All right, so here's what I here's what I don't think is right on this. Most of this is good. This is like a really good starting point, but I don't want to pass in a software file, right? I don't have the file locally, and I don't even know if that's a valid option. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't even see the option to pass in the the software binary. So I think that's wrong. I think this is incorrect. 
Validate certs. That's a common thing. Is it here though? Uh, no, I don't think that's valid either. Chat GPT messing you up, brother. Uh, don't see the upgrade. Yeah, I don't think this is legit. Um, let's tell it. Let's tell it. Um, this is all wrong. Uh, let's see. There is no parameter for software file, um, nor validate certs for this module. Here's a corrected version. Sometimes you just gotta like yell at it, right? Yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's getting closer. I don't think upgrade or software is there. So chat GPT has failed us. Uh, humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it is a lot to be impressed by. Like it, it is, it's incredible, but you gotta be able to decipher the, the crap, right? Um, this is wrong again. There is no option for software or upgrade with the PanOS software module. And stop giving me detailed explanations. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's still off, guys. All right. So, um, <laughs> okay. So, ChatGPT has failed on the first day of jo uh, the job. Uh, Ansible host, Dallas Virtual Firewall 01.redtail.com. This could have been an IP address. Um, more at the mere attempt in writing the playbook. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> dude, like, uh, I get I get a little bit too excited about this stuff. Um, this 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 tool is is, is beyond in comprehension as far as it's amazing. Now it's important to point out, like ChatGPT, it it's um its perception of the world is effectively snapshotted at, at the at the start of 2021. So it's possible that when ChatGPT's data um, had been like finally collected maybe the modules at that point you know two years ago were structured in this way but for the most part um you know this this will not work for us today it did a good job no 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 man totally did totally did like i am i'm thoroughly impressed with it uh i uh i use this uh more than i would probably admit like, um, this is, this is definitely incredible. I can just say, Hey, uh, stop using Ansible and give me the upgrade script in Python. No explanations, please. I might as well say, say, please. I was a little bit rude earlier before. Uh, so if you want to use Python to do the same thing, here you go. So far, this doesn't look bad. Again, it's expecting you to have like the binary itself right here. And I don't know if that's a common scenario. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to this. Uh, I think we're in a good, good position right now. Uh, so Dallas is the name of our host. Dallas and the inventory will translate to Dallas Virtual Firewall 01, which I should be able to ping from the console. Let's just validate. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so connection local, gather facts and become, these will always be these exact values. Connection local, so it doesn't try to push a Python script to the remote device. Um, 
gather facts equals false because gather facts only really works for servers. Uh, become equals false uh, because we are not asking for elevated privileges. Install panOS. Uh, let's go to what was our version? 1023H2. Let's and restart. Okay. Now I also need to pass in the provider here. So let's go ahead and add in the parameters for my provider. So that's going to be API key. Uh, and I, uh, I think I can just get away with API key. So we'll try that API key. API underscore key. API underscore key, and we'll paste in our API key right here. Okay. Uh, so uh, as far as like comparison, before we try this, is there anything different about my playbook than you know what you've got for the most part? Like, is is there anything glaringly missing, or is this kind of Oh, IP address. I don't think we need to add IP address because that should be coming from the inventory file, which is pointing to here. So I feel like you can, you should be able to skip this. You should be able to skip this. If you're using an API key, you should be able to skip username and password. Um, serial number only comes into play I feel like if you're using Panorama, I'm guessing. I, I don't know. I haven't used these before. Uh, and port is obviously still going to be on 443. So I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to exclude the IP address for now because I don't think it's necessary. And uh, let's just make sure. I have IP address under the profile. Yeah, I'm going to just exclude it just to see. This is... Uh, we're both going to learn on this one. All right. So Ansible playbook. Uh, my Ansible config is pointing to the right Python interpreter it is also pointing to my inventory file. So I don't need to declare my inventory file. I think we're in a good position. Let's try uh, upgrade.yaml. All right. So could not resolve the module PanOS software. Okay. So uh, from your playbook, are you importing a collection? Are you importing either the Ansible community collection or are you importing the uh, official Palo Alto Networks one? Let me know. Because right now, I need to make sure that I don't need to import the community because uh, it says that it doesn't know how to find PanOS software. And if we type in Ansible dash dash version, it says it's going to look for modules right here. And then it's going to look for Python libraries right here. And then it's going to look for Ansible collections right here. So let me look into, let's look into here. Palo Alto Networks. Okay. So you, by doing that, you are officially pulling in the the official, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Ansible modules. So um, if you thought earlier that that might be your problem, uh, it should not be your problem. So Palo Alto Networks dot OS. All right, perfect. Let's clear the screen. Uh, let's install those collections. Yeah. Uh, Ansible Galaxy collection install. Palo Alto Networks.panos. Oh, it's already installed. Okay, cool. All right, so let's run our playbook now. Provider params are required. So maybe I do have to pass in the IP address. Shouldn't. Should be able to get away with it. Because that should come from my inventory file, but we'll go ahead and add that anyways. And you and I will officially be in sync on this one. So IP address, I'm gonna type in Ansible underscore host. 
that is a well-known variable that maps to my inventory file, this variable right here. So whatever I type right here will ultimately come back and be passed in right there. So let's try that again. If I had a permissions issue, it should have been, a, it should have complained already. Let's come over to the firewall and let's see if anything's going on in the GUI. Yeah, look at that. It's downloading it right now. Are you a label? Are you label? Are you able to at least get to this point where you're downloading the package? 500 meg over my <laughs> three meg circuit. <laughs> Might take a second. You're on version 8.1.19. What version are you trying to go to? I wonder if like the problem is that you're trying to step up too far. Like you can't go from, you know, 8.1.19 to 11.0, for instance. And please don't ever go to uh, 11.0, a .0 version on release. Please <laughs> don't do that. Not for your production environment. For labs, it's totally cool. Uh, to 9.1.12. Hmm. I feel like that's reasonable. I, I don't feel like that's a major jump. I mean, it's obviously, in you know, versioning, it is a major jump between 8 to 9, but... Hmm. Let's go back and look at the uh, the modules themselves. Let's see if there's any. Hmm? It looks like it was supported at at least eight one six based on based on this documentation. Ah, this was written by Michael Richardson. So Michael Richardson, uh, he used to have my job before I joined Palo Alto. Uh, he's since moved on to a different industry. Uh, but yeah, that validates right off the gate that this was definitely um, this is definitely the official Palo Alto uh, modules because that's my it's uh, my predecessor. It looks like this is gonna work. So can you can you share with me like your uh, the error message that comes up? Maybe that will help like point us in the direction as to what. What actually took place? Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Software, it's downloaded. Is it going to install? I'm not going to click that. The error message say you need to you need super user privileges to do that. Here's my here's my beef with that command that error message because if you have xml api access you have super user privileges like you, this like if you can do the xml api you can do anything at least that i'm aware of i'm not aware i'm not i'm not privy to a situation to where someone has xml api access but cannot do something like a device user upgrade maybe that was an issue back at in the the 8.0 release train that uh, has since been remedied. Maybe that's your issue. But uh, yeah, sorry, we weren't able to recreate your problem. But 
Uh, you're using Ansible Tower message. You need super user privileges to do that. Yeah. If that's coming from Ansible Tower, I mean, the, the, the message itself isn't obviously coming from Ansible. The, the message itself is coming from the API. Um, so I don't think like Tower is going to change the the uh, the result at all. Um, if you're getting a, a permissions issue, which it sounds like you are based on the, the message, it sounds like it might have been in either a bug on that version that you're running today. But it, it doesn't look to be the, the situation anymore. I'm curious how this module actually handles this wait period. Let's look on GitHub. Pan, Ansible dash pan. Let's look in the, um, in the module utilities, maybe. Uh, where's the, where the modules? I'm, trying to upgrade 912 manually and try the module again. Yeah, please let me know how that works if you I'm curious. Um, let's see. PanOS software module. Uh, this again is just the docs. I want to actually see the code here. Uh, it's been archived. Has it moved somewhere else? Older modules. Hmm. Modules used bars. And uh, it's under the, it's under the library. That's interesting. It's not how I structure my playbooks, but or my modules, but it should be okay. PanOS software. What I'm interested in is like, how is it, how is it handling this like kind of sit and wait thing? Uh, let me see. So here are the parameters that get passed in through the Ansible uh, playbook. Module version, sync to peer, download, install, and restart. So if the desired version is not equal to the current version, then sync to peer. Okay, so there's like an HA sync operation available. Install version sync equals true, restart. Like I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm, here are the three major phases, the downloading of the package that's complete the installing and restarting i don't know i don't know if that's taking place here uh let's look at tasks maybe yeah okay so the install process has initiated it initiated a little bit like four minutes ago so this might take a while it might take a while okay so cool hey thanks for sharing uh it doesn't look like that's the case anymore. What's the what's the answer we like to give? Like it works on my machine. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Just had to have a little joke at your expense. Um but it it, it does look to be working. Uh, based on your message, it, it, it's most likely a bug based on that version because I or maybe it wasn't a bug. Maybe that they, maybe they just did permissions differently before I joined. Um that's also possible too. But Really cool. Um, nice little basic uh, repository. What I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this to uh, to the uh, to the GitHub. It's probably not going to help you, but it might help others. My secret API token. Oh, there it goes. Uh, install changed. And is it going through the reload? It looks like it is. 
cool. All right. Yeah, so it got some kind of signal back saying that something has changed, and so the playbook ended. Um, very cool. It looked like it took... Honestly, I, the way I'm counting it, that's like 10 minutes since I... Well, maybe it wasn't a full 10 minutes. Maybe I was just hanging out at the prompts for a while. Uh, so it is definitely working for you. Thank you for trying. Yeah, no worries. Um, no, no worries. I'm going to go ahead and, and upload this anyway to GitHub just so that we can... Uh, other cool people get to take advantage of this. So we'll create a new repo. We'll call this uh, PanOS Upgrade dash ansible use ansible to upgrade your firewalls and pan os it's open to the public create the repo and we'll just copy these lines right here and paste them right here uh we'll do git add all Get commit message, the init, and we'll push this to GitHub. Boom. Okay. So, in case you just want to have something to reference, here's a here's a repo without any documentation <laughs> um, of how we did. It. Oh, look! I just included my full key up there. Just, I love it. Just. Oh, don't be like me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be like me. I, I'm not going to worry too much because this is a, a this is a lab environment. So, good luck with that key. Um, <laughs> don't be like me. Do not push your full API key to the public internet. Um, there are products, specifically Palo Alto products, um, that will prevent you from making that mistake. GitHub Palo Alto Networks. Uh, there's checkoff is one of them. Let's see. Let's search with Google. Uh, so yeah, uh, prevents cloud misconfigurations and find vulnerabilities in your infrastructure as code. Um, so checkoff is one that can kind of validate um, your uh, you're not about to make a, a big boo boo. Um, but anyway, I made a big boo boo. Now now my tokens out there. Oops, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I won't tell anybody if you don't. Okay, let's get back to building some Ansible goodies. All right, so uh, the three things, the three things, let's close this out. Just delete the user Twitch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, very valid. Uh, I'll do that once the firewall reboots. I'll just delete that user. Okay. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> I better because I, I'm streaming this. And so, and I'm not going to, uh, I'll, I'll just keep my mouth shut on that. Uh, okay. All right. So let's do a recap on what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, so we need, uh, Ansible collection needs three new modules. Oops. We're going to say, uh, Create Ike Gateway. Create IPsec VPN. And then create a uh, service connection. Okay. So that's the task set out for us today is to do those three things. Uh, the API calls to accomplish this. Let's move back over to Prisma. And um, where's the API spec? Okay, so those were, I just want to grab the actual URLs so that we have just kind of like the base. So create Ike Gateway will look like this. API uh, right there. Okay, uh, create IPsec VPN. That one's going to be right here. Okay, that's fine. API call is this. 
this. Oh, shoot, whatever. Like, call this um, workflow.yaml. That's fine. What are you complaining about, man? Uh, sorry, we'll just switch this to Markdown. Tasks will be one, create I gateway. Uh, this is the go okay and the last one is the service connection Modules to create. All right. Mm, that should be good enough. Uh, let's uh, let's change this file to be marked down. Okay. All right. So um, step one, we'll create the I gateway module. Step two, we'll create one for the IPsec VPN, and step three, we'll create one for the service connection. And then how this would actually look like in the playbook is that you would obviously execute one, two, and then three to kind of tie them all together. So before we get started on the actual Python development, let's kind of refresh our minds. Yep, 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 that's fine. Uh, let's refresh our minds onto how the, the actual Python modules work behind the scenes, how the Ansible modules work behind the scenes. Uh, let's go ahead and close everything else out here. It starts here with this uh, file called API spec.py. And this file doesn't do a tremendous a lot. It, it, it basically allows me to declare how a Ansible module should be structured. It, I, I pass in certain things like there should be a description. If it's required, I set it to true. I say what type of object description is. In this case, a description is a string. The max length is 10, 000, or 1,023. And again, it's required. So if anyone tried to run this addresses spec without the description, it will fail. That probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Description, I feel like, should be optional. But anyway, that's basically what this API spec file does. Is it allows us to declare the structure of how the module should be formatted. And then when we look into the actual module file, we'll import that API spec right here. So API spec.py uh, gets imported right here. And then we import the, the API spec. From here, uh, once we have that, we import our Python SDK. There are some other Ansible uh things that we also have to import uh, towards the top that's fine but here we import our python sdk this will handle the authentication as well as all the um the actual uh, configuration i'm importing time this is more of a me addressing a bug right now not a bug within the anything related to palo alto it's just a bug within uh json web token uh library right now which if I issue a request using a token that I received within the first second of receiving that token, it'll say that the token's not valid yet. And that's just because it's it's at the same exact second. Um, so we have to we have to put a, a little delay in it, which really sucks, but eh, we'll do it. Uh, some documentation on how the module is used. 
some examples on how the module is used, and then we get to the actual uh, Python script itself. This is um, the actual heavy lifting of the module. So we're gonna be spending most of our time uh, building out this main function for all of the other modules. And you'll see it's gonna be a lot of copy pasta. Uh, I'm basically gonna copy this script and make some little tweaks here and there. And hopefully that should be enough for us to get the job done. Now, usually anytime you're doing a lot of copy paste into a uh, into files, like you're copying one Python script, or you're copying like 90% of it and putting in another, that begs the question, like, shouldn't you just have all of this code in a centralized place and import it? Um, and the answer is, yeah, probably so. The reason why I'm not going down that route, just because no one asked, I'll share, um, is because there are going to be there's going to be another SDK for the SD WAN stuff. So when we get into the SD WAN provisioning process within Prisma Access. We're going to be importing the Cloud Genix Python SDK. And so I don't want to have too much like of the code in a centralized place because there's going to be some modules that don't need that. There'll be some modules that need, you know, what the Cloud Genix SDK needs. Um, and some will just be based on this as a, a Prisma Access SDK. So, um, yeah, it's kind of sloppy, but. Uh, I feel it gives us enough, uh, it gives us ultimate control over how it's functioned. Okay, let's see if our firewall came back so I can delete that twitchy user. I'm starting to get nervous. Dallas Virtual Firewall should do it right yeah that should okay bye bye twitchy it's good knowing you okay so let's start off by copying address groups module and renaming it to ike gateway and let's start updating all of the documentation so Wherever it says address objects, check the logs. Always check the logs. Oh, I logged out. Let's check the commit logs, that's still going through and config audit i think we're fine there i think we're okay no one knows my public ip so we're i think we're in a good position uh okay so ansible module for managing ike gateways and prisma access uh so documentation is super important uh let's also make sure uh that my Visual Studio Code knows to use my Python interpreter for this environment. So which Python? Ah, the poetry shell. And which Python? There we go. Let's do a quick pip freeze. Let me make sure I have some of my formatting things on here. Looking for black. There we go. Okay. And let's set the Python interpreter, uh, select interpreter. Hmm. Python extension loading. What's going on here? All right, let me restart Visual Studio Code because it's acting up. Reload window.
Okay. And yeah, it's selected my Python interpreter. Okay. What I was looking for was making sure that we had linting for things like this right here. Uh, and I had the ability to uh, fold some of my uh, some of my goodies. All right. So we'll start off like this. Uh, we'll actually just say fold all and that will fold everything. And we'll just kind of peel the back the onion here. All that is good. Uh, documentation the module will be called Ike underscore gateway. Uh, I don't know what to do here. I I want to I want to leave this singular, but it looks like my other modules, addresses and groups those are plural. I'm gonna leave it singular. I'll have to adjust those later. Uh, manage Ike gateway objects version added in 0 0.1.3 manage Ike gateway objects in Prisma Axis. I'm going to pass on the options because we haven't developed that schema just yet. Um, I'm going to call this Ike gateway. I'll pass on the examples because we haven't we haven't established that schema. Um, all right, so let's look at the schema here and figure out what we need to do to build the Ike gateway. Uh, let's use pan.dev docs for this. So for Ike gateway, where are you at? There you go. Let's look at a create operation here. So there's one query parameter that's required. We're going to need to pass in the folder. And here's our options. So for us, folder will be equal to service connections because that's what we're building. Uh, the Ike gateway that you want to create. So authentication uh, is going to be a pre-shared key. Okay, so we need to pass in that. Local ID, this is not required. So I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, the name, obviously, we're going to pass that your address is going to be either IP, FQDN, or dynamic. We'll do I will have to account for all those. So we're going to use this information now to come up with that API spec inside of our docs. So let's kind of split our screen here like this and fold this like that. And let's start working on the API spec. Uh, at the same time, it's kind of can I I don't know if I can hide all that. So we'll just we'll just go off of this. Okay. So we'll create a uh, a new spec right here. This is a static method. Uh, def is going to be Ike gateway spec. Again, just trying to define how the Ansible modules should be structured. Uh, return uh, the Ike gateway object spec. Yeah. Uh, return should be in the format of a dictionary because that's what Ansible is expecting. Let's just use a little bit of copy paste here. Actually, I'm going to use a lot of copy paste because some of this is just very similar. So we'll just copy all that and paste it right here and then start making some modifications. Okay, so description is description one of these? No, it's not. So we can remove this. Uh, dynamic is also not one. Folder is, and folder is a type of string and the options. So we got shared, mobile users, remote networks, service connections, Mobile users container. Interesting. Uh, we'll copy that. Mobile users container. Mobile users explicit proxy. Uh, I see nothing here for global protect, so we'll remove that one. Okay. So that takes care of the query parameter. Let's look at the, the body. What are some of the things that we need to pass into the module? 
So this is sorted alphabetical. I appreciate that. We need to account for authentication and it needs to be either pre-shared key or certificate. Now this is gonna be an interesting one. Inside of the module, like we can code this just fine within the API spec. That's not a big challenge. The challenge comes in like within the module, we have to be able to account for the fact that the user may be passing pre-shared key or they may be passing a certificate. So we'll have to, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at how do we do that. But for now, let's create the uh, authentication. Authentication is gonna be of a type dictionary. Uh, the, this is a required object. So required equals true. Uh, choices, uh, hold on here. Choices, choices, choices. Do I want choices here? I don't think I do. Authentication, pre-shared key. Yeah, I think I do. Uh, pre-shared choices equals pre-shared key and certificate. Okay. Uh, let's put in a comma there. There we go. Uh, this is required. Here are my choices. And the type is going to be, so pre-shared key, uh, Okay. So the the parameters for a pre-shared key are simple. It's just like the key and the string. And we'll start there. Certificate, there's many other things. We got some true false stuff, some booleans. Uh, there's an actual certificate, which needs to have a string attached to it. So quite a bit, we'll start with the easy one. Uh, authentication, I don't think, I don't think I'm going down the right path with that. Let's say required true, uh, type is going to be of dictionary, the options, it's also going to be a dictionary. All right. So bear with me. This is going to look pretty ugly for a minute or so. Uh, so for options, we have pre-shared key dictionary required equals true and type equals string, All right? The other option that we have is certificate. Required equals uh let's make both of these false because it's going to be an either or type of operation so we can't really hard code that there's something required uh this type is going to be of a dictionary it's options going to include let's kind of cut this down here I really wish this would stop pointing up. Uh, just gonna have to deal with it for now. Uh, certificate has allowed ID payload false. Okay, options equals this. It's a dictionary. Uh, required equals false type equals boolean and I think that's good certificate profile Local certificate is another dictionary. So a lot of nested dictionaries here. Local 
certificate. It's going to have a uh, type of dictionary with uh, options. I don't know if you just saw how much coding was actually required for this. Um, let's revisit this for a second because it's kind of an interesting one. So we've got authentication happening here. It's a type dictionary. Um, you've got two options that you can pick. There's pre-shared key. Pre-shared key. Oh, actually, this is not a string. This is actually... Um, uh, yeah, let's try to keep it consistent with the API itself. So type dict, uh, options equals dictionary key equals dict, blah, blah, blah. So what's interesting is that, uh, I'm using GitHub's copilot and it's just like, it's knocking the code out for me. Like, <laughs> It's knocking it out left and right. Okay, so we got authentication. That is right here. Authentication is either a, uh, a pre-shared key or it's a certificate. If the user passes a pre-shared key, they also need to pass in a, a, um, a key value of key is the actual name. And then the value is a type string, which would be a requirement. Now, Outside of pre-shared key, if they go down the route of certificate, uh, then they have these options. One, two, three. I th uh, I'm missing a couple. So allow ID payload mismatch is declared right there. It's not required, but it is of type Boolean. So we account for this one right here. Certificate profile is also not required. It is a, a string. Local certificate is actually a dictionary so the type is dictionary and then there's a key within that dictionary called local certificate name and it's re not required but it is a type of string all right so we've got those three let's knock out the last two and for that i'm just going to copy and paste uh, this one because it's also a boolean and we'll just change the name of both okay so cool all right so this is how we're mapping out the api right, we, we're reading the docs it tells us how the body needs to be structured we take that information and then we create that within an api spec which will ultimately be pulled into our module so that we make sure that whenever somebody calls this ansible module not just that we know what the different components of it do, but also we need, we want to make sure that it conforms to what the API is expecting. Because if it's if it's not, then there's a chance that you're just gonna you're gonna wet the bed, and we don't want that now, do we? All right. So authentication is taken care of. That's probably going to be the most difficult one. Maybe we'll see. Uh, authentication is done. Local ID. All right, so local ID will have uh, a, uh, excuse me, string and type. Is that really it? Is that, is that all there is? Local ID. So local ID is going to be a object. Local underscore ID equals to dictionary. The first thing in here is going to be a required equals. Uh, do you use specific extension to fix the indentation in VS code? 
Good question. So what I use is there's a really popular uh, Python library out there called Black. Uh, so here it is installed. So you can do like pip install black. Uh, once you have black installed, black is mostly, uh, it, it's there to help with formatting in your code. Black is usually required to be issued from the command line. So you would type in like black and then like either the path to a file or a path to a folder of files. And then it will come back and it'll tell you all right, we looked at all these files and you need to change the formatting of this file at this line type of thing. Now, Visual Studio Code has the ability to auto format based on the uh, uh, whatever formatter that you use. So if we say uh, control comma format on save. Uh, so I'm looking in the settings of my Visual Studio Code and I have format on save uh, checked. And so what should happen, as long as your Visual Studio Code is able to load the black library, uh, it should be able to uh, auto format based on black. So uh, it takes care of things like not just spacing and indentation, but also commas, like you might be missing a comma. Uh, like if I left out this comma right here, Right, that's a that's a big 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 no no because effectively this dictionary comes back incomplete and you can see my linter is already complaining. It's got a red squiggly line. It's not happy. If I hit the S key, it's not. That's an invalid dictionary, so that's not going to work. Let's just uh, let's paste some junk in here like that. If I hit the save key, I was hoping it would point that out. It would correct it. So maybe it doesn't do commas after all. I thought it did, but maybe it doesn't. How do you load black library in VS code? So the only thing you need to do is one, like once you've got a Python virtual environment, um, like in my case, pip freeze grep black, right? So once you're, once you've got a virtual environment with all of your packages installed and black is one of them, um, what you need to do is you need to come down to the bottom here and make sure that Visual Studio Code is looking at your virtual environment. If it's currently set to like slash user bin Python 3 or something like that, it's not looking at your virtual environment. So the way that you would set that is you would control shift P on Windows, command shift P on Mac, uh, brings up the, uh, the search palette and you would just select, uh, you'd type in Python, select interpreter, and then just make sure you point to uh, the interpreter um, of your virtual environment that has black loaded. Once that's done, it should just automatically uh, have black loaded inside of it. And sometimes if you don't have black loaded or any Python former, black's not the only one out there. Uh, if, if you don't have one, uh, I think Visual Studio Code will actually give you a prompt and say, hey, do you want to do you want to install like a formatter? Let me see if it'll do that. Let's create a new window here. And I'm going to paste in this script that we're working on into a new file. Uh, let's uh, let's do this in WSL. Uh, let's see. Uh, new WSL window. So right now, inside of Visual Studio Code, let's create a new file. We'll just dump this code in here and we'll call it example.py, right? So what I get right out of the gate, Visual Studio Code says formatter auto pep eight is not installed. Do you want to install? I can either say yes, and that will install auto pep eight, or I can say select black or use black or, um, I don't even know how to say that. WAP? <laughs> Yap. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my mind went in the wrong place. Um, so uh, you could install, um, like Visual Studio Code was, is kind enough to tell you. Now, if I, if I um, look down here at the bottom, it says right now Visual Studio Code is currently thinking that the Python version I want to use is found in slash bin 
slash Python 3.10, which is my system's base Python 3 version. And then, and then that, that Python environment, their black is not installed. So that's why it's, it's giving me this prompt, like, Hey, like, what do you want to do? How do you want to proceed? Um, this is like, honestly, this is like one of the biggest values of using something like visual studio code, not just like the color formatting stuff, not the color coding and stuff, the eye candy, but the actual like auto formatters. I find that just probably one of the most valuable things about visual studio code. So I highly recommend if you're writing Python code, uh, to, to pick one formatter that you like and stick with it. Uh, also look at linters, right? Linters point out errors in your code. Um, I like to use flake eight. Uh, another really popular one is PyLint, but visual studio code does the same thing, right? It'll, it'll tell you whenever there's a problem within your Python code. And so, uh, hopefully that, that helps you. Okay. Okay. So how are we moving along here? We got the authentication. I don't think we've finished that. Did we? We might have authentication. Yeah, we, we passed on authentication. Okay. So we're working inside of local ID right now. There's some boilerplate, but we need to remove that. Uh, so let's remove this. The type is going to be of a dictionary and the options to pass into the dictionary are going to come back and look a little something like this. Uh, ID and type. Interesting. Okay. So ID equals a dictionary uh, required equals uh, fine. We'll just type uh, ID is a type of string. Okay. That looks good. Let's do the other one, which was type. And uh, this is required type is of string. I need to find a way of like preventing this pop up from so VS code right now is trying to give me a little bit of insights into things that are happening inside of my code and I don't want that. So let's figure out how to block VS code. Uh, Google.com prevent VS code pop up uh, Python. Okay, uh, hover enabled false editor parameter. Yeah, I wanted them to go away. So let's editor parameters false. All right. Uh, okay, let's uncheck that. Save and I don't know if that did the, it may have worked. I don't see the pop-ups unless I like directly hovered over there. That may have done the job. We'll soon find out. All right. So local ID is taken care of name. Name should already be one and it is max length, 63 characters type of string. Okay. That looks good. Let's move on to our peer address next. I try to keep the API spec in alphabetical order, but it doesn't have to be peer address is going to be a dictionary with, uh, three different choices, IP, FQDN and dynamic and each one of them. Well, wait a minute. No, a peer address is going to be either IP, FQDN or dynamic. IP is a string. FQDN is a string. Dynamic is an object. I don't know how we're going to account for that. Default value. I might have to leave off dynamic for now. Let me look at the API spec to see if we've got any other clues. Create created. Let's look at the body. Oh. 
Oh, oh man, that's really cute. Uh, my wife is, uh, I've said this many times, she's a falconer. And so she uh, she spends a lot of time with all kinds of different birds of prey. And uh, one of her former apprentices just captured a, a new um, kestrel. Let me see if I can't get that shared here. Let's see what's a good way of sharing this little image. Uh, can I paste it into the desktop? Copy image. There we go. Look at that guy. Actually, it's a girl. She's adorable, man. Really cute. Let's see. Let's take another look at her. So cool. So cool. We'll see if she works out. We'll see if she works out. Not all, not all birds of prey work good as a falconry companion but the idea is that you just you take them in for their first year so that you can help them get past that first year which is like where all the uh, mortality happens they have like a 80 85 percent mortality rate in their first year so you try to trap a juvenile and get them past that first year and then make the decision whether or not you're going to release them this one looks really cute Tiny man, so small, so small. I'm used to hawks. Hawks are much bigger. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, let's look at this here. Peer ID, peer ID, local ID, uh, protocol common. Hmm. This doesn't look. This doesn't look like. This doesn't look right. One of these things is lying to us. Well, there's protocol common. There's local ID. There's peer ID. There's peer address. There's protocol. So up to this point, everything looks good. But name is C. It's missing. Uh, authentication should not be authentication key. It should be one of these two. So that's. Either the docs are wrong or the API spec is wrong. We'll we'll figure that one out. Maybe something changed. Uh, but let's look at peer address. And peer address is just a value. So that that's not there's something that's that's screwy on this. We'll have to figure that out. I'm gonna base it off of the docs and hope that it's right. Uh, so okay, let's uh, let's pull up those docs again. is dictionary uh, required is true right yeah required is true uh type is a dictionary wait a minute is it uh it should be yeah it is going to be a dictionary because it's either going to be an ip address fqdn or dynamic don't know how we're going to account for that. That's that's the one thing that's holding me a little to the side right now. All right. Options. This is going to be a dictionary. Oops. Or did it, let's uh, peer address options. There we go. So we've got IP. Uh, FQDN and dynamic okay all right dynamic equals dictionary all right so there's our three dynamic ip and fqdn 
IP say uh, required equals false. Type is a string. And we'll just copy paste for these guys as well. I'm going to leave dynamic as a string for now. We'll, we'll come back to figure out how that should be structured. I, I feel like dynamic should be a string because it should just be like a, um, like a, like a dynamic host name. Let's, let's look back in the GUI. Let's see if we can't, let's update this. Uh, IPsec tunnel, create new. Under dynamic. So when dynamic is set, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it. We'll just leave it a string and we'll just kind of roll the dice to see. We'll see if we break it or not. So there's peer address. Uh, we got that done. Let's go down to peer ID next. That looks like it's just ID and type. That looks pretty familiar with this of ID and type. So we'll copy this and paste it right there. Peer ID. Okay, so required is false. There's an ID. It's of a type string. And then there's also a type, which is also a string. Um, we can... Let's enforce some choices here. So choices is going to be IP address, key ID, FQDN, and UFQDN. Oops. Okay. So they can enter a string, but it's got to be one of these four choices. So that's how we uh, we kind of force them down that. All right, so peer ID is taken care of. Protocol. Oh, hopefully this. Oh, hopefully this isn't too ugly. Uh, dead peer detection enable. Okay, this is this isn't so bad. Protocol dictionary. This is a required object. This is of type dictionary options. First is Ike V1. Uh, and it is required false. Type is a dictionary. Options inside of this dictionary is DPD. DPD is also not required. Uh, the type is dictionary. I don't know if I want to. Yeah, let's let's just try to stay as close to the API as we can. Uh, type is dictionary. The options are enable. Enable is uh, not required. It is of type boolean. I'm just kind of blown away with like how much of this code I actually had to type. It's, it's pretty small. It's pretty small. Um, Copilot is really coming through in the clutch here. All right, so DPD right there. Let's close out DPD. Uh, we're still in Ike V1. Um, we want Ike underscore crypto. Equals dictionary. And it's a not required of type string. Okay, so that takes care of Ike V1. Let's make sure to close out. There we go. And let's, I mean, let's just copy that whole thing and make it Ike V2 underneath it. So Ike V1, Ike V2. And that should take care of those. We also have version, which is going to be a string. Uh, 
let's say uh, protocol. Uh, oh, that needs to be right at this level. Choices. Okay, so looking at protocol, we got Ike v1. We open that up. We've got another nested object in there called DPD for dead peer detection. It's not required. There's another nested object in there called enable. It's of type Boolean. It's also not required. Ike crypto profile is not required and it is of type string. Then we copy and pasted that for Ike v2 right there. And then version, 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 version is a string also not required and has three choices. So Ike v2 pre pre preferred, Ike v1, and Ike v2. All right, last one should be protocol common. And it's not too difficult. All right, protocol common. Fragmentation is another dictionary uh, with enable is the only object inside of it. Okay. Fragmentation uh, is a dictionary. Sorry, getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, required equals false. The type equals dictionary options. There we go. Fragmentation required equals false. Type equals another dictionary. Um, options inside of that equals enable. Enable is also not required and it is of type Boolean. Mm -hmm. All right, that takes care of fragmentation. Let's do the same thing for nat traversal. So I'll just copy and paste this. Let's see. There we go. Uh, required false. Enable, and it's a Boolean. Okay. Uh, and passive mode is a little bit easier. So that's just going to be passive mode. Required false. Type equals... Boolean. Okay. Well, that takes care of that. So that's the hard part, right? Is kind of finding out what is the API expecting you to pass? Uh, let me remove some of these. There is no static and there is no tag. Um, so what is the API expecting us to send? And this is where documentation is going to be your saving grace understanding how to structure the body uh, that you're going to be sending over. So in our case, we've got folder. Folder needs to be declared in the module. Uh, let me just make sure that's required. Yes. Okay. So there's the, the sole query parameter. Everything else is going to go into the body. Authentication is required. And it can be a pre-shared key or it can be a certificate if it's a pre-shared key it's very very simple it's another 
uh, key is nested inside of there, and that type is of a string. Boom. Okay. Looking at a certificate, certificate's a little bit more complicated. Uh, none of the parameters look like they are required by the API. Uh, there's one for allow ID payload mismatch. It's a Boolean. Certificate profile, it's a string. Local certificate is a nested dictionary. So it's a type dictionary with a, another value of, uh, another key value of local certificate name. Also not required, string. Strict val validation. Okay, I'm starting to talk a little bit too much. <laughs> I'm tripping up on my words here. Okay, these these all look good. Uh, so authentication is taken care of, folders taken care of, local ID. This one was pretty simple. Uh, it is not required. Let's change that. But if you do declare it, then you need to pass in. Uh, nope, nope, nope. These are also not required. Okay. So we have two objects inside of here, ID and type. They're both of strings. Let's move over into the name. Name it is a type string. It is required and the max length is 63 characters. Okay, easy enough. Uh, peer address. Could be IP, could be FQDN, could be dynamic. Uh, we're setting all three of those equal to a string value right now. Um, <clears throat> I also want to add enforce a max length on this. So we'll say max length equals 255. And the dynamic, man, this one, I think if we run into any problems, it's going to be this one right here. I just don't have an example of passing in the object. I don't know what it's looking for. So flying a little blind into that one. Let's look at the peer ID. Peer ID is, whoops, sorry for that. Uh, peer ID is not required. Sorry, let's look at peer address. Was that required? Yeah, okay. Peer ID is not required. It has a ID and a type, both of strings. And for, uh, let's see, let's also enforce uh, t -t 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 max length of 1024. And the type can be IP address, key ID, FQDN, or UFQDN. Protocol. Do, 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 do. Okay, this was the Ike v1, Ike v2, and version. Ike v1, Ike v2, and version. Okay. Feel good about that. And protocol common was fragmentation, NAT traversal, and enabled Boolean, enable Boolean. Uh, passive mode, also Boolean. Cool. All right. And then the other two are for our uh, provider, which handles the authentication, and state, which declares whether or not we're going to create or delete something here. So, all right, Oof. boy, as ugly as it is, we can be a little bit relieved now that part is over. Uh, so with the API spec done, let's come back over into Ike Gateway, and we want to import, let's see, Okay, so we are importing, where are we importing it? We imported it at the top. So from the API spec, we're importing the entire API spec. So Prisma access spec. And so uh, let's import the specific one that we're looking at, which is Ike gateway spec. All right. Wow. All that just for that. Okay, um, let's look into the actual module now. Uh, so what's going to happen is that we're going to look for inside of the Ansible playbook. 
whenever someone calls this module, we're going to look for a dictionary called provider. And we're going to set that whatever was passed in the provider, we're going to set it as a new object called auth. Then we're going to create a placeholder. We're going to create a new object called session. It's going to be equal to a pan API session. And then we're going to authenticate with uh, the pan API by passing in our auth specifically inside of that auth dictionary, we have a client ID. And so we're going to pass that in as client ID inside the auth dictionary. We have a client secret. We're going to pass that in as client secret. Uh, inside of that auth dictionary, we have a scope. We're going to change the, uh, well, we're not going to change the value, but we're going to create a new object called scope. And it's going to be set to this string. This is, by the way, what was broken last week. Uh, previously, it looked like this. Uh, and it was just like TSG ID and then the ID parameter. But now it looks like this. And again, since the, since this, the request and the response, they looked different. That's why the SDK broke. Uh, so this is how we prevent that. And then token URL, this is just going to be hard coded to the API authentication for OAuth. So that's always going to be that. Uh, okay. So that's how we get the provider object from the Ansible module uh, passed into our module, like those parameters get passed into the module. And this is how we build an authentication ser uh, a session to the API. This will give us a token that will be valid for 900 seconds. But the very first second of that, we, we need to have a sleep again, because uh, if we try to use the API token at the same moment that the, um, the token was generated, Within the same second, it'll tell you that the uh, the token isn't yet valid. So we're gonna have to include a sleep function. I hate doing that. I really, really hate doing that because it makes, it adds one second to every single operation and that just drives me bananas. All right, uh, so here's some things that we had copied over. Everything else was uh, forklifted from the other uh, modules. This is where we're gonna have to have our own coding into here. All right, so we need to find out using the Python SDK, how do we create a service connection or an Ike gateway? We know how do we create one through the REST API, but using the SDK, what does that object actually look like? All right, so this is where I'm gonna regret removing those pop-ups because now I want the pop-up to give me a hot link uh, let's see, uh, which Python let's open up cache, pie, poetry, virtual M's Prisma access collection. Uh, it's going to be under the library site packages, pan API, uh, config, and yeah. Just open that up. Uh, yes. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking into the actual underlying SDK that's providing uh, the functionality. And I'm looking for uh, what's going to create the Ike gateway. And I'm crossing my fingers that there's an endpoint already here. And ladies and gentlemen, there is not. Oh, here it is. It's under network. Perfect. Uh, so let me make sure that that's the right API. I didn't want to have to update the SDK because that's just an extra thing within itself. So it doesn't look like I need to. Is that the right URL? SSE config v1 Ike gateways. Perfect. Okay. So coming back into our work over here, we're going to import, change our imports. Instead of importing pan config objects address group we're going to import pan config network dot ike gateway network ike gateway okay now we need to call that so this is just for session authentic session authentication 
Uh, let's now create the Ike Gateway. So we'll call this Gateway, and we'll use the Ike Gateway object. And I believe the only thing I need to do is just pass in the various parameters that we just declared within the API spec. Um, so before we get down that path, let's see how long we've been going. Been going for two and a half hours. That's listening to me talk nonstop for two and a half hours. God bless your hearts. I'm going to take a five to 10 minute break so that my uh, vocal cords can relax and my dogs can urinate. And we will be back in, uh, let's just say 10 minutes. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Hey, thanks for hanging out, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we're, we've come quite a bit so far. Uh, to recap, we did a little bit of uh, Ansible troubleshooting uh, for our friend XY uh, in chat. So we, did a, we upgraded a firewall using Ansible, uh, went through that process, and we're building Ansible modules right now for Prisma Access uh, SASE solution. Uh, the hard part was building the API spec just to define the parameters of our module. We've got that done. Uh, now the last, last thing for us to do is just kind of fill in the gaps for um, uh, creating this through the Python SDK. And after that point, we'll have a working uh, Ansible module to add to the collection, which will be super cool. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to take a break and a stretch. I exercise, my posture has gone to hell. And uh, we'll catch you guys back in 10 minutes. All right, see you guys soon.
Hey, you guys are back. Here, here. We're ready. It's cold. I got a hoodie. Oh. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I feel regenerated. Uh, cold weather will do that. It's not cold. Hey, Google. What's the current temperature? In Stagecoach, it's currently 56 degrees. 56 degrees and I got a hoodie. You wouldn't know this, but I've got Norwegian ancestry. I'm over here putting on a hoodie for 56 degree weather. Hilarious. Okay. All right. So let's get all this ironed out here. What we need to do is we need to get uh, our parameters that are defined in the API spec passed into this module. Uh, and then we need to... Uh, to actually get the execution working. All right, so looking at Ike Gateway, let's see what kind of things, coming back in, let's just kind of split these screens up so we can figure out what we need to pass and what we can get away with. <clears throat> All right, uh, why isn't that folding? Fold, there we go, okay. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create, I'm going to try to create this in Python first. Is that the right way of doing it? I think it is. I think it is. So what we'll do is we'll fire up. Let's fire up that Docker container that we worked with earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, build this out in Python first, just to make sure that the SDK can actually build the, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, the Ike gateway, because if the SDK can't do it, then we shouldn't be building a module for it. We should be focusing on fixing the SDK. So we can validate this right now. I'm just going to pull down this, uh, Docker container that we created earlier. And we'll do some live Pythoning. Sassy Docker. And let's pull down this container. No, 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 no. I want Ubuntu. There we go. Docker pull. Uh, and while that's being pulled down here, we need to create a config file that's got our super secret parameters to authenticate to the API. And uh, we'll go ahead and create that now. Uh, you want to... I'm just going to go in my home directory here. We'll say code config.yaml and paste that in right here. There's my config file. And obviously I need to adjust this while you guys aren't looking at me. So I'm just gonna let's see, how do I change the camera to be, we'll just say, be right back. But you can listen to my serenading voice as I enter my super secret passwords so that you guys can't see them. I like you guys, I just don't trust you. And I hope that you feel the same about me. Uh, interesting statistics while we wait. Uh, looking at my stream details, uh, it says that the vast majority of the people that come in and check in on the stream, at least from Twitch, live in Russia. So hello, my Russia friends. Hello, hello, hello. I wish we were on better terms right now. Uh, the world is a terrible place sometimes, man. This history has taught us time and time again, humans do not uh, deserve good things. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, hopefully we can be friends again soon. What is my TSG ID? Uh, I feel like I should know this. Where is my TSG ID? Oh, good heavens. All right, uh, it should be in the GUI, right? 
under config tenants tenant minute as identity access. There it is. Gotcha. Okay. And I can paste that right. Where'd you go, buddy? Where did you go? Right there. Okay. That should be good. All right. Now I can reveal my screen back to you guys. There we are. All right. You'll be inundated with my face again. Hello, hello, hello. All right. Now that we've got that worked out, let me just make sure I'm in the right directory. There we go. Let's just kind of pump up the screen a few hundred times. Let me just make sure that config.yaml does exist, and it does. And we will run this command right here. So let's copy it. Let's make a small modification. I want to zoom this and that should be it. All right. There we go. We're all successfully authenticated to the API. Perfect. Okay. So uh, we're going to say from panapi.config.network import Ike gateway. All right. And let's create a new object called gateway. Ike gateway. All right. And let's see, looking at the Ike gateway parameters again, uh, we need to pass in a folder. Folder is going to be equal to service connections. So folder equals service connections. There's one. Authentication is required. Uh, so authentication is going to be equal to uh, let me check the AI ops. Uh, pre-shared key. All right, so pre-shared key. And that's gonna be a dictionary, by the way. So we're gonna say uh, pre-shared key. And it's gonna be set to Hello Alto one exclamation point. All right, so there's the authentication passed. Uh, I'm gonna skip local ID because it's not required. Name. Name is going to be. Uh, uh, this. Uh, let's see. What am I call it? Pan API test. There we go. What else is required? Uh, peer address. So peer address is an object. So it's going to be a dictionary. Oh, yeah, here's a reference right here. Peer address is going to look like this. It's going to flatten that out a bit. IP 1.1.1.1 slash. I don't think I need a slash. It's just an IP, right? Let's see. Peer address equals... 1.1.1 IP. What else is required? Mm, peer ID is not uh, Ike. So we're going to say protocol Ike. And we'll just paste that into the URL here. Actually, we'll paste that in the VS code. We'll try to dress this up a little bit here. Um, we'll say protocol equals there will be this string object or this object is should be like that and See if I should probably just do a single quote so that we don't have to rewrite all of those. And let's just flatten this a little bit here. I'm going to remove uh, dead peer detection because uh, I don't think it's required. Let me look in here. It's not. So I'll remove. No, screw it. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. Uh, Ike v1. I... 
make v1 actually just want to use ike v2 i think it should be either or i don't think it's both That's fine. Looks like it's formatted right. We just need to insert some data where it says string. I think we should be off to the races. So uh, within the GUI today, the ones that got selected for service connection, it was... One dot one dot one dot one pre shared key. Here is uh oh it, I might need to actually oh okay if I just do Ike two only follow alto oh please let me copy that. There we go. Okay, so that's protocol. All right, protocol equals, oops. Protocol equals, oh heavens, what did we mess up here? Uh, protocol should be like that. Right. Protocol Ike V2. Okay, blah, blah, blah. What else is required? Nothing. All right. Let's see if we can't pass that. It's not happy. Positional argument followed a keyword argument. Gateway equals Ike Gateway. Version should not be in quotes. And okay. Let's see how this looks. Looks kind of messed up. All right. So, what do we do wrong? Service connections, authentication. Reconcile TRRs. Uh, name is peer IP address. Oops, that should not also that should also not be in quotes, and that should be an equal sign. Same with that. All right. Oh, so Ike Gateway. That looks. This looks good. I'm happy with this. This should be okay. Um, let's, oh, let's, uh, 
let's kind of standardize here. We're going to have double quotes on the outside, single quotes on the inside. There we go. I'm worried. I, I don't think I should be writing any quotes in there. I think it should be... I think if I pass in the quotes, it's going to think that it's a string. And for these, they're not strings. Oh, uh, let's just call this blah, blah. Let's see if it will auto format for me. And it doesn't. It looks even worse. Uh, Paul Alto one. That should be right there. Why is it? What do you oh, Why is it saving as JSON? That's Python. IP B two that peer detection. Enabled. True. Oops. And. All right, let's look at this again. Folder service connections, authentication is this dictionary, pan API test, pure IP address is this dictionary, protocol is this dictionary, and it's really mad about this one. It's because I'm missing a, in, a closed bracket somewhere, I'm missing it at the end. There we go. So, E2. Okay, let's see if that works. Let's paste that into here. Type of gateway. Okay, let's make sure our session is uh, still active. Is expired? False. Okay, so now let's do gateway.create and pass in our session token. And see, we didn't get an error. That's somewhat promising. Uh, let's move back here, back, 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 back. And let's uh, navigate away, come back into it. Live stream. Uh, edit. PSEC tunnel. Manage Houston. Uh, I don't see. I don't see it. What if we ask the API to list all of its uh, gateways again? Previously, we had two. Let's run this again. It's going to tell me that my key is invalid. Let's update our key. And say so use that and try it again. Let's see, oh, wrong one. List of gateways, run that back. This time we've got one, two. Okay, so it still only created two. So we didn't get a response from the API. Service connections, communication pre shared. An API test IP. I feel like that's right. Then again, I'm wrong all the time. So let's try to create one from the API. This will be in the service connections folder. Uh, the header is blah and the body is blah. So maybe this is like where the problem is because the maybe our documentation, what we're going off of is incorrect. 
because there is a difference between what's on pan.dev and what is on um, the API spec that I'm working from. So let's copy the example, paste it into here and make some changes. Authentication is going to be Palo Alto. Palo Alt one exclamation point. We're going to remove local ID string. We're going to call this sting. Yeah, there we go. Uh, pure IP address 1.1.1.2 is fine. Uh, peer ID. I don't think we passed that, did we? Did we have peer ID? We, we had peer address, but not peer ID. I thought peer ID was required. No, it's not required. So we're going to leave that off. Protocol. This is fine. Uh, let's grab the, um, the Ike profile. Oh, heck. Uh, Ike crypto profile. Let's grab a list of those real quick. Oh, I didn't mean that. Service connections. All right, we'll grab. Not that one, not that one, or that one, or that one. Where's the Ike profile for the fun stuff, the Palo Alto stuff? Remote networks, Velo Cloud. There we go. That's the one. Oh, Ike Gateway. All right, we'll use it for both of those. Uh, protocol common, that was also not required. So I'm gonna remove that. And that should be it. Let me send this bad boy and see what we get back. We got a 201 created. Okay. So through the API, it looks like, looks like it worked. Let me come back over into here and we'll say manage uh, Houston. Oops. Let's uh, refresh. Ah, oh, wonderful. Got to reauthenticate. So. Don't want you guys to see this, so please stand by. Let's look at, oh, I don't know. We'll look at this page. Just logging in here. Nothing to see, guys. Nothing to see here. There we are. Okay, hit up edit, drop down, no options, manage. I was hoping to see another one here, but I don't. Let's use the API to get a list and see if this changed from two to three. And it did. So we now have three Ike gateways. Uh, where's the one that we just created? Sting, there it is. Why don't I see Sting listed here? Hmm, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Is it because I, is it because the primary tunnel is being like already established? Do I need to go under? No. What I'm expecting to see 
is the other IPsec tunnels listed here, but I don't see them. I don't see them. I should see it listed right there. So remote networks. Service connections. I really feel confident that we have one here. Right there. API says it's there, but I do not see it listed in the GUI. Uh, let me do a reload. one of those things that will block the kick for us we get it wrong let's let's do a little comparison to see what 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 sting looks like and how it compares with the others so this is one that we created earlier let's just dump this json into vs code and look at it All right, so this is the one that we created earlier. And this is the one that we just created. All right, what's the difference between us? ID, name, folder. There's no, okay, local address is there at the bottom. Here ID is not declared because I, oh, okay. Let's grab this and Let's paste it here. We'll remove that. Um, authentication. The key when we created it. What did it look like? Yeah, it was just pasted it in there. Uh, let's change the IP to this. Let's remove ID. And we'll call this one Postman Test. So it's identical to the one that we created earlier in the GUI, except it's got a different IP address and it's got a different name. When I send this, what are my two issues? When I send this to create a new gateway, send, I get a response, Let's save that. Uh, 
we get the ID listed right here. So I can say, give me the ID by this guy right here. So here's the test. We got the ID. It should look very similar to what we had created in the GUI. Let's go back to the GUI and do a little reload just to get make sure we're on the freshest data. And uh, let's look into here. Ah, God. So, got a little issue here. The issue that we're working on is that when we create the Ike gateway through the REST API, it doesn't show up as a managed IPsec tunnel. Now, to be fair, an IPsec tunnel has more things than just the Ike gateway. But let's see if I say... Uh, create a new and uh, we won yeah we we man we should see this but we don't it's gonna that's really gonna block the kick for us on this um, talk about anticlimactic uh, I'm gonna have to work out what the devs to figure out what's going on here because that should be there and I don't see it. Um, I upgraded to 9112, but the same issue. The only difference in my case is that my user is not a local user. Ah, I authenticate with ice. Oh, bless your heart. And mapped the user to an admin role in the firewall. Hmm. Yeah, tough to say. Uh, nothing jumps out at me right now. Obviously, ice throws just a, a little bit of a knuckleball into the equation. Um, but would it be enough? Do you have any? Do you have any access to the ice logs at all? Can you see if um, if everything was good from like the client authentication perspective? You say that you've mapped it to the admin role within the firewall. Hmm. Are there any other API calls that you cannot do using the XML API with your user? Like, are you able to, um, maybe not like configuration related, just like pulling down data are you able to use the xml api with your user to pull data out of the firewall like uh, what would be a good example a good example would be let's look at pen os and operations get licenses can you run Dallas virtual firewall one retail.com. Oh, I created darn it. I deleted my, um, my user. Are, are you able to run a command like this? Yes, it, it can authenticate and it gives me an API key. With that API key though, are you able to do any operations? Like in this case, we're, we're running this command right here against the API. Are you able to use your API key to do this? I'd like to know whether or not, I'd like to try to find a way of identifying whether or not the authentication challenge is happening on the local firewall itself, or if it's ha happening with uh, ICE. I don't, my like my knee jerk reaction says it, it's probably not ICE. But I'm not sure. 
ice is like that. It, it's like the one aspect where my environment is different than yours. Get the Okay. Man, I'm really sorry. I, I don't have a, any kind of insights as to why that's not working for you. Would there be anything in the logs? Yeah, I hear you. Um, well, since my 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 uh, work is effectively blocked now because I can't see the the Ike Gateway in the GUI, I'll at least walk away with from the session with just something of uh, of additional value. Uh, give you an update on how it goes. Please do. Um, please do. Let's look at authentication. Yeah. Are you logging your authentication? Uh, controlled by authentication policy. I don't think I have a authentication policy. Mm -hmm. Policy, authentication. Um, <clears throat> monitor, authentication. Looks like I have to create a policy first. Uh, live stream test and source zone. Eh, it's not a zone though. It's the we'll say any. I don't think this is gonna work because this is going to the management. It's not zone based. Um, authentication enforcement browser. Hmm. Log forwarding. Enforcement uh, default web form. I don't know if this is right. <clears throat> I'm trying to get logs for authentication attempts. Ah, okay. That's cool. Um,
Can you tail left on this? No. Yeah, there we go. Tail follow from Q log. There we go. Okay. I'm not seeing the logs come through. Uh, simple question, MP, does that stand for management plane? It's okay if you don't know. Oh my god, I really wish I hadn't done that. Uh... Can you make a model train of Choo Choo Charles if you can? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't see anything to prevent us from going down that route. Uh, let's see here. Let, let me uh, let me work on this real quick, and then we'll work on Thomas the Choo Choo Train. Uh, can be an image. I wonder if it comes in through a different log and I'm just speaking out loud because I don't know uh, tail follow yes uh, web server log uh, let's try API metrics okay that's for making the API call. That's cute, but that's not the droid I'm looking for. What about access.log? Uh, okay, that's interesting as well. Let's, uh, we should get another hit here. Yep, okay. So it looks like stuff related to the API is actually in the web server log, which makes sense because it's that's how the API is being served up. Uh, can you do me a favor? Can you tail left? Can you run this? Have that running in the background and then use your Ansible playbook. What I'm interested in, you're not going to get a 200, right? Because you're, you're, you've got some kind of issue going on. The question is, are you getting like a 401 or are you getting a 400? Are you getting a 404? You probably shouldn't get a 404 if you're using the Ansible module, but I feel like if authentication is happening and it's, I I just want to validate that you're, you're probably getting a 401 error before we move forward.
It was Choo Choo Charles. Oh, is this going to get me banned? Let's see. Choo Choo Charles. Ah, yes. My wife plays this video game. Uh, she uh, is a big fan of it. She likes uh, she likes really weird games. Um, yeah, she's kind of weird. It's Jack Spadicey. Hmm. Where's the train? I'll just sit here and watch this until until you get back to me. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks pretty serious, guys. Looks pretty serious. Um I think I could be able to model them in, in the API spec, but probably not. Probably not what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Let me see if there's any other goodies. Firewall doesn't have an access log. <clears throat> so you, you're looking under web server dash log. Under web server dash log, I have <clears throat> these that are listed here. Oh, you got it? Okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah, either access.log or... I think that's probably the right one to look at. Just, <clears throat> it's not going to fix your problem, but I'm just hoping that we can at least see the, uh, the response code that comes back whenever you run your Ansible on it. There's as close as I can get to Charles the Choo Choo Train.
use service connection. That's kind of interesting. You got a bunch of 200s. Even when your your playbook failed, you still got a 200. Let's see if uh Watch the error log. I'm going to pass in an invalid token and see if it. No, invalid credential. So that doesn't show up in the logs. Hmm. Well, that shouldn't be the status, right? Like, you shouldn't be able to get a next PID. No, that's not really going to be helpful. <clears throat> if the error is honestly permissions, then you should not be getting 200s. So, I'm switching to a local user with the same admin role to see if the ICE user. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I feel like, uh, uh, hmm. I feel like I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if, um, uh, if like authentication or permissions issues are stored somewhere else. Hmm.
same issue. Wow. Well, it's nice to it's nice to remove ice from the equation. Just to validate the users, the authentication. Because yeah, honestly, you probably should. Um, those guys are much smarter than me, so they'll probably have an idea. But just to validate, your permissions look something like this. Do, 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 do. Um, no profile. Oops. You have a role based and you have it set to live streamers and then the authentication profile for, oh shoot, did I delete it? No, 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 it's, um, admin roles, right? Yeah. So yours looks kind of like this web GUI blacked out CLI, none rest API blunt, none and XML API, all greens. Just validating is, uh, it sounds like, yeah, you, you probably should open a case. Well, shoot guys. You know, this is uh, the second week in a row we tried to build some Ansible modules, and the second week in a row we ran into some kind of issue. Uh, hopefully, seeing the process is beneficial, right? Understanding, yeah, understanding the, like, the declaring the spec for the module and then tying that in into the actual module. Um, that's that's the juice. Hopefully you found that useful. Um, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. Uh, I, I I need to do a little bit more work. I need to engage some team to figure out why my API call is is going through and it says that the gateway resides on the service, but I do not see it in the GUI. I have suspicions, but I don't want to just throw those out because I don't know if I'm right. I'm probably wrong. So rather than do that, we'll just go ahead and wrap up for today. Uh, <clears throat> three and a half hours. It's, it's, a, it's shorter than usual, but hopefully it was beneficial. Uh, and we will see you guys next week. I don't know what we're going to focus on next week. Uh, I'm kind of uh, apprehensive to pull up the Ansible module development conversation because it looks like a... Uh, yeah anyway so uh but for now we'll go ahead and wrap up thanks everyone for for hanging out I appreciate it uh you've been here for uh more service now stuff i worked with record producer in demand good question i don't know uh service now record producer uh Let's look at this together. <clears throat> See what this looks like. All right, Techno Monk. Oh, the audio is just, it's almost unbearable. Um, Record producer is a specific type of catalog item that allows end users to create task-based records, such as incident records from the service catalog. Hmm. Okay. Use record producers to provide a better end user experience instead of the regular task-based form creating records. They look and feel of a record producer similar to that of a catalog item, but the record producer generates a task record such as an incident instead of a requested item. Ah, how do you use this? How do you use a record producer today? Uh, you can use 
record producer for tables and database views that are in the same scope as the record producer. You can also create a record producer for tables that allow create access for applications and other scopes. Oh, I'm trying to think of how to, how to, hmm. Okay. Servicenow.com. Uh, service now record producer. And what was the other uh, in demand? What was demand? Demand management. Centralize requests across the enterprise and streamline the investment process for new products. Or, boy, that's the most generic thing I've ever read in my life. <laughs> um, invest strategically. Benefits of on-demand. Align future investment choices to business needs. Monitor and validate. Uh, maybe... Hmm. Our ServiceNow team is using this instead of a catalog item. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll jump back into ServiceNow and we'll take a look at these things. I think that they're like with the developer instance. Let me just log into ServiceNow. Don't worry about this. Sign in. I feel like I should have access to it. Uh, let's see. Looks, but there's so much about this platform that I don't know about. I only know what I've like had to build in the past. So let's see. Don't care. Log me in, please. Catalog item. Task based records. Okay. All right. That kind of kind of makes sense, but kind of doesn't explain it. Uh, demand management seems more like a licensed feature. Let's search for demand. No. Hmm. Boy, their search is terrible. I search for record producer. I get back, what is a cookie? <laughs> Are copyrighted files illegal to have on my computer? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, record producer. My record producer. I don't have any. Record producers. Service category. This might actually honestly be a better way of doing Kind of what we did earlier with the catalog items. Change VLAN on Cisco switch port. Ah. Okay. Is there a way for me to, to test this? Let's see. Change request values, short description, yeah, blah, 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 back out plan, test, oh, okay. Can I use it? How do I use it? Hmm. Well, 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 got some iPurp eye popping charts uh how do i use this current version 1.0 hmm let me go to the catalog oh good heavens is there a way that i can use this view Click on service catalog. Categories. Network. Standard changes, maybe. Yeah, there it is. 
How do I use this? Create standard change, maybe? Uh, that, I think we're... Hey, okay. Planning schedule. Schedule's an interesting one. Conflicts notes. I feel like when I I was a servant when I was operating networks, I feel like this is the way that I did things too. Hmm. Because I always had to fill out like multiple levels and always give a like justification and stuff like that. So I feel like this is what I did as well. Okay. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Thank you. Thank you for the idea. Uh, next week, we will explore more ServiceNow goodies, including the record producers. And uh, yeah, really cool. Thanks for the suggestion. And everyone else, uh, thanks for hanging around so long. Really, really appreciate it. We've been, uh, we've been at it for a while. My dogs are telling me that it's time to wrap up Friday afternoon. Mm-hmm.